Welcome back and thank you for staying with the broadcast. Recover St. Lucia is continuing to support the national effort to curb the spread of COVID-19 in country. The initiative, which is spearheaded by the private sector agencies and the business community, has joined hands in helping rally citizens, companies and communities to accelerate recovery from the economic and health effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Over the weekend, the group sought to reward random people for abiding by the existing protocols. If you were out and about this past weekend and abided by the COVID-19 regulations, your chances of being gifted by the Recover St. Lucia initiative would have been increased. Recover St. Lucia, spearheaded by its Food Security Committee, gifted individuals with food vouchers courtesy Massey stores for practicing the protocols. We are saying congratulations for all those of you who are wearing your mask. It pays and there is a reward for you wearing your mask, my people. So right now, we see a group of y'all, everybody wearing the mask, and you all stand out as good examples for the rest of the nation. So we have just randomly chosen this lovely lady in the green top, and we're giving her a $50 food voucher from Massey Stores because it pays for you to actually wear your mask. Alexander said the initiative, which is being implemented with the help of town criers, is planned on being replicated in more communities across the island. When we come across, for example, persons who might be gathered in a bus stop, waiting for their buses, practicing the, the physical distances, uh, distancing and also um, wearing their mask and so on, we just randomly pick somebody among the group and reward them with a $50 food voucher. So it pays for people to actually follow the protocols. It is an incentive that we give into the St. Lucian um, public generally to ensure that they are following the protocols. The Recover St. Lucia initiative, which was launched in November of 2020, is expected to be in operation for 12 months. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. The Cachi City Council has relocated farmers who were stationed next to the marketing board on weekends to Jeremy Street. They will now occupy the space where the provisions market vendors were previously housed. The farmers say the move proved to be difficult at first. However, they are hoping to settle in. Vendor coordinator at the Castry City Council, Augustine Victor, says after almost four weeks of consultation and negotiation, produce vendors will now be selling their goods on Jeremy Street where provision vendors were previously located. He says this decision was taken to ensure that all COVID-19 recommendations coming out from the last NIMAC meeting are adhered to. What we do is try to take out the farmers close by, put them in an area where they can be social distanced, and the vendors themselves can buy from the farmers and come and sell the goods. The other thing also is that the same vendors who complain in every day about farmers, when the farmers are there, they buy from the farmers, and whatever the farmers remain, the farmers stay there to buy. They're still complaining that the farmers are there. What do we do? I mean, the thing is, we, 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 we have to understand that we're all in, 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 the, in these things together. We have some areas that are open. The vendors are there, the ground provision vendors. Anywhere within the market area the vendors are, they will make the $2 that they have to make. All they have to do is to unite themselves, understand too much complaint, and put the, the produce neat and nice, and everything will be okay. One farmer expressed dissatisfaction with the move and did not mince words when expressing her annoyance. <laughs> Another farmer, Laura Alcindor, however says he understands the rationale behind the move and while sales are a bit slow now, he is hoping they will look up soon. For the last three weeks, they have been talking to us about that they will be shifting us to the old fire station. But what I find that was a little um, on the part of the um, city council that was not good, that they did not give us no, uh, no air on the ad that they will be shifting the farmers to a new location. Because by shifting the farmers here today and today, it's a bit new. It's a bit new today that you are not seeing your, your regular customers. And it is a little way, um, it is a little way very slow. Eh, eh, eh. But 
I don't know with time how it will how it will, it it will come with time. Victor says farmers will be at the new location until further notice. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Genevieve Gonzaga. A government minister in Antigua and Barbuda has accused Barbados of sabotaging regional airline LIAT. In a scathing address to Parliament on Thursday, February 11th, Minister of State in the Ministry of Finance and Corporate Governance, Lennox Weston, said that Barbados used their majority shares to not only bankrupt the airline, but to try to liquidate it. Antigua and Barbuda's Minister of State in the Ministry of Finance and Corporate Governance, Lennox Weston, did not mince words in Parliament last Thursday, when, without naming Barbados directly, accused that country's government of attempting to steal or destroy regional airline Liat. Weston read from a memorandum dated March 23, 2019, which indicated that a team from the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority, ECA, met with the legal counsel for Liat, who notified the authority that the airline was considering relocating its headquarters from St. John's to Kingstown and sought information on a change of location. Describing the previous Antiguan government of being too soft, he recalled that his administration has always said that the plan was to steal Liat and if they failed, to destroy Liat. During the meeting, the lawyer of Liat invited ECA officials to attend a meeting in Barbados to discuss legal matters pertaining to Liat. The team accepted and they journeyed to Barbados and they met with the government headed by the Prime Minister of Barbados to discuss Liat. After welcoming remarks, the lawyer announced that consideration was being given to relocate headquarters of the airline Liat to St. Vincent and the Grenadines but due to certain legal implications, it was decided to opt for Barbados instead. Let me go slowly, because some of you all are so naive, right? So naive. Oh, I love Mia. She's robust and strong. She love Barbados. She love you all. She don't huff Dominica. You remember medical school? Weston noted that according to the memo, the ECA team understood that a new LIAT would be established with the name of LIAT 2020 and it would be relocated in Barbados. The lawyer advised that it would be best for Barbados to establish a civil aviation authority. They want to have a car so we don't have the civil aviation authority and carry to Barbados. You all think we must be nice and smile and talk nice to them, as if we're fully. We look as if we love blow. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister of Barbados and instructed the Director of Civil Aviation to establish a civil aviation authority within the shortest possible time, by the weekend. A, 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 a prime minister who's not even part of ECHO, directing ECHO, which is a sub-regional organization, I say kill the aviation authority in Antigua, form a new one in the Barbados in two days. Where were we, slaves? When, how long slavery finish? We're an independent country. We must not stand up and fight. Weston praised his government's ability and commitment in getting Liat back in the air following its collapse in 2020 due to COVID-19. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. The price changes take effect from Monday 15th of February 2021. Gasoline increased from $2.79 to $2.90 per litre, or $12.67 to $13.20 per gallon. Kerosene remains unchanged at $1.36 per litre, or $6.18 per gallon. Diesel increased from $2.64 to $2.65 per litre, or $12 to $12.05 per gallon. 20-pound cylinders, 9.07 kg, increased from $30 to $30.48 per cylinder. 22-pound cylinders, or 9.98 kg, increased from $33 to $33.53 per cylinder. 100-pound cylinder, or 45.36 kg, increased from $186.93 to $191.70 per cylinder. The public is informed that the next adjustment of the retail price of fuel products will be on Monday, March 8, 2021. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Stay with us. We have more after this break.